Hello, everybody. Welcome to Big Fish, Little Fish on Christmas Eve. And Craig Thompson, it's been a pleasure to be doing this over the last four, five, or even six months with you. And yeah, it should be a nice Christmas Eve meeting there, but the highlights, the clash of the big gun trotters. Who you got in the ninth on the card just after five o'clock at Cambridge tonight? Yeah, good evening to you, Michael, to, uh, to Amanda and your family. Uh, a Merry Christmas and uh, to the viewers as well. It's been fun doing the uh, Big Fish Little Fish. I think we started way back in, in the COVID period and we've we've got through to the end of the year, Michael. And we, we've got a highlight at Cambridge today. Uh, it's a, an absolute cracker. Uh, to answer your question, I'm, I'm, I'm with Bolt for Brilliance. Um, I think you'll win the national trot and I think you'll win it convincingly. Um, he may be underdone tomorrow. I, I look at this race and I think this is a really tricky race for Sunday Sun. Now, you know how big I am on this horse. Uh, yep. I've tipped him right through the carnival. But I thought this race, he, a mile is not really his go. He's had seven cracks at a mile. He's never won. In fact, he's only placed twice. The race maybe, as I'm about to try and work out how it's going to unf uh, unfold, is Majestic Man will get across. And Sunday Sun at some, some stage will get parked, like he did last week at Auckland. My problem is it's only a mile and it may take him 600 metres to get to park. So that's out of the straight the first time, round the 800 metre mark. Does that give him enough pressure time to put it to Majestic Man? And even if it does, does that put Bolt for Brilliance in the 1-1? One, one? So I, I just feel it's a really, really tricky race if you're going to take the $2.10 or the $2 for Sunday Sun. Not saying you can't win the race. But this is not really his end goal. His bolt for brilliance is not his end goal as well. But it's not his distance, if you understand what I mean. I read the race exactly the same. Majestic Man crosses. They tend to keep the foot down with him. So there'll be no easy quarter for Sunday Sun to get outside him. I think he'll try and put pressure on down the back straight. But they'll probably be going 54. Phil Williamson comes out on hrnz.co.nz Thursday and says, I reckon they'll break the national record. So I agree with everything you say. I think he, I think he might still get away with it, but I absolutely wouldn't be surprised. It was last start in the Lyle Creek, I thought he was just a filthy certainty. Bolt for brilliance is interesting. Um, you would have seen him against the galloping pacemaker the other day. Pook, he trotted really square. Thought he was really good to the line. I just think he might be a run short, but I think if Sunday Sun breaks Majestic Man then Bolt for Brilliance might come off his back. I think it's an intriguing race. It's actually good because we don't know what's going to happen. And we have three very good horses. A Majestic Man comes into play because he's such a good miler. So I, I tell you what it is. Like 230 Bolt for Brilliance? Yeah, I, I think you'll get around that 222, 30. I think Majestic Man will get out and Sunday Sun will stay around even money. They're just two completely different type of horses. Mm. Sunday Sun is just such a rolling get into a fight type of horse where Bolt for Brilliance is one of those horses who technically can do a little bit more in a race. So he can come off the gate, he can sit and come for one run. He can position in front or back in the field where I don't believe Sunday Sun can do that. He doesn't have the tactical speed. As you saw at Alexandra Park, he likes to get outside a leader and say, listen, I'm the best horse here and we'll go to war from a long way out. In a mile, unless you're on a track like Menangle or a big track, that mile at Cambridge is probably the easiest mile you'll ever get, Michael, because yeah. it's a bit like going around Kaikoura. If you're hu hugging those market pegs, it's the short way home, and, and it takes you ages to get outside the leader. I mean, you can look at the mile at Cambridge, and they get to the winning post, and that's half the race gone. Sunday yeah. Sun might not even be outside the leader at that point. So I'm not trying to talk, talk the, the viewers out of it, because I think at the moment he's the number one trotter. But that may, may change in the next two weeks. I wouldn't be stunned if Majestic Man won. I wouldn't be stunned if, if... Here's one of the things. If Sunday Sun did break, say he got under pressure and broke, it would actually inconvenience Bolt for Brilliance. And Majestic Man could find himself two dents clear at the top of the straight. It's an intriguing race. I'm, I'm with Sunday Sun, but I take on everything that you said. I agree with it all. I think he might still get away with it, but I'm not totally blown away by the two ten. So going, going forward in a week, uh, in the scenario that Sunday Sun does win this race, would he be your tip to win the national trot in a week's time? I think it's a different race. I think it's a different race for this reason. This time next week, if he beats Majestic Man on Thursday, Majestic Man might be handing up. He might say, okay, we've had enough of this. Then Sunday Sun could roll to the lead or Bolt for Brilliance rolls to the lead. And it's a whole different ball game because neither of those horses is beatable in front for mine. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it because I think it's a really good meeting at Cambridge today. If you're in the area in Cambridge, 
you can get on track and go into a draw out of the race book to have a five hundred dollar win bet on Sunday Sun of Ultra Brilliance, and so it's going to be a good fun day there. I thought the race immediately afterwards was really good. Italian lad never got into a race last week at Alexander Park, so forgive him. But Mr. Fantastic's a good horse, and BD Joe's a really good horse. I thought this was a really excellent race to 10th on the card. I've gone BD Joe to cross them, and if he does do that, I think he'll win. But there is that little potential that Mr. Fantastic could either try and lock him or at least make it difficult for first one. I think what will happen, Michael, is they'll go forward with both of them. They're both very quick off the gate. Uh, BD Joe led in the mile in the size stakes seat and beat American Dealer. Last week, I think he was a little bit underdone, and I think he was vulnerable from about the 200. And that showed at the end of the event. I think it'll be a different horse this week. Bookmakers are giving you a chance. They're giving you 440 for Mr. Fantastic, 240 for BD Joe. And then they planted a talent lad in between them. He was on one rain the whole way at Alexandra Park last week. I'm just not sure he was that comfortable going around Auckland and saying that he still, um, he, he ran pretty good section. He was running his last mile 154. So he's gone okay. I think he's better left handed. So I expect a better run. Does that put him on top for me? No, it doesn't. I think BD Joe, on what we saw through the Cup Week and the size stakes, he should be starting favourite, and I believe he'll start round two dollars. I thought uh, I spoke to Steve Telfer about him. He did say he was short in the Alabar Classic, so therefore he will improve for this week. I thought Telfer had a good back end to the program. Look down the hatch was a chance in race eleven, and Enjoy Me was a really big chance in the last on the card. So I'm, I'm a Telfer man today. Sunday Sun and a bit of Telf. Uh, what do you like today? Yeah, I reckon they'll get three, possibly four. Um, I've got them winning uh, in the last. I think the best bet of the day is the filly in the last. I mean, she's flying and joining. Yeah. Absolutely. And the bookmakers have given you nearly $2. I mean, she's been beaten by better twist in the last three starts. And the horses that have got in between them have been La Rosa. Um, so to be fair, she's the third or fourth best filly going around at the moment, Michael. I mean, she, she's flying. That group one performance last week was outstanding. Um, she came from a horrible draw, barrier eight. She hits barrier three and a rating 40 and faster. I thought the dollar 95, I, I had her at a dollar 50. I believe she could start somewhere around that. So if you get that shopping now, get involved. I believe they can win with down the hatch. I believe their other really good chance is the horse that trialed on the weekend called, uh, is it Show Me Heaven? Yep. Uh, I think it's race eight, number Horses one. Horses down south, one at Addington. Look, look yeah. the good horse. Yeah, $2, uh, around the $2 mark for her. So I've got them winning about four aces, Michael. I think they're stable to back today. Okay. Anything else mucking around earlier in the program? Because first race of 12 there goes at one fifteen, and, and you know what it's like, Craig. If people are on holiday, they want to get involved. Yeah, they're in a betting boat, aren't they? I, I didn't mind Christopherson in the early trot. I, I thought his work was really good at Franklin a fortnight ago. You had Kratos in that trial. I thought he ran to the line every good, every bit as good as Kratos. Um, he, he went to Auckland, he stepped, he got into the trail and then galloped down the back. Um, he, he won his only race here, Michael. So I thought, what, he's around $5. He wouldn't be worth an each way bet uh, over the 2,200 metres from a good draw. Yeah, I thought so too. She put on Kratos, uh, mate, fractured his knee just after that trial. He's, he's, he's finished. So he's actually um, our Breeders' Crown winner, which we picked out of the sales ourselves. He's going to be retired. So. so you know what happens now, Michael? That means you're at you're at uh, the sales uh, in February, putting your head back up again and getting another Nevada. Yeah, you're yeah, good on you. Thanks for that, Craig. Hey, um, <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas to you, my family, mate. You've done a super job for the punters. Um, the good news is they don't have to wait too long to see the big fishy man again because we're back on Boxing Day for a few winners out of Westport, mate. But enjoy a day off tomorrow.